You saw the Death Betty in the thumbnail and thought, who is this girl? And is she gonna be in the video? Yeah, right, you wish, fish. This is Topanga from Braj Meets World. See, when I was a wee lad going through my peach fuzz days, Topanga was my ultimate crush, the one that eternally got away. See, the moral to this whole story is you just got clickbaited. No girls hang out with us. We're just a bunch of crusty, sexually frustrated dudes. But while you're on this video, you might as well stay. But you should be proud of yourself for two reasons. First, you're alive. And second, you're here. Today we were just getting straight into it. What's going on guys? It is CH from Homebrew for Life here with another Grain to Glass video and I'm very excited because A, we haven't done a multi beer in a very long time. B, we're using an extract we've never used before. And C, most importantly, we're putting it on nitro. AKA beer gas. And huge shout out to Northern Brewer for supplying us with today's ingredients. And if you wanna check out our nitrogen K grader setup, click on this card right here. All right, let's talk about the recipe. But first, cruise on over to my house, take your shirt off, I'll provide the ketchup, and you... Today we got brages, we got pooches, we got hops, we got grains, and we got all the yeasts. Huge shout out to Northern Brewer Todd for always coming through and making the day feel like pre-puberty Christmas mornings all over again. But first, let's talk about the water situation. I was out of the beer salts I was looking for, so when in doubt, just go with filtered water, also known as reverse osmosis water. $1.25 for five gallons at my local quick stop. As for the recipe, I knew I wanted to keep the focus on a traditional brown ale, shooting around 5.5 alcohol by volume. It is a brown ale, so we wanna keep the IBUs around 20, 25. Hops are gonna be simple for this recipe. One ounce of Northern Brewer for 30 minutes. The yeast game is very universal for this style. I'd go with either White Labs, London Ale Yeast, Safe Ale 04 or 05, but we're gonna use a yeast we've never used before. We're gonna go with Y yeast, 1028 London Ale. Never used it before, but it feels like one of those bomb bag toys I used to always get in trouble with in the 90s. You gotta hit the pouch inside there to activate it. We're gonna get a little extra saucy today with the grain bill. Eight pounds Maris Otter, one pound Crystal 60, one pound Caravienne, eight ounces smoked malt for no other reason then I just have some. Four ounces chocolate malt. As for this extract, it was the only one I saw on Amazon, so I pulled the trigger. Time will tell. All right, let's get this brew day going. Bippity boppity brew day. How's my crow's feet? Yellow teeth, gray hairs in the beard, some Gandalfs coming through. Let's rock and roll. Okay, so I poured my mash in, let it chill for about 30 minutes. This 30 minutes allows me to weigh out other stuff, set up tripods, camera angles. But I did notice my wart was a little light in color. So I made a game time decision and added another eight ounces of chocolate malt. Milled it up. Stirred it together for another 15 minutes. Started Vorloffing and it looked great. All right, good time to take out your yeast. Start heating up our sparge water. Three to four gallons at no more than 172 degrees Fahrenheit. This is America. These neighbors think I'm crazy. These neighbors are walking by, they're like, what the? Brewers have a lot of different ideas how long you should mash in for. And times do vary. But when I sparge, I always do about 45 minutes to an hour. After I sparged, I racked it back into my boil kettle so I could speed up brew day using propane. The Zanville burner shreds. 
but I may need to get a bigger boil kettle. I used to have like three kegels, and I don't know if I sold them, gave them away, or got jacked, but this is what we're working with. I always recommend using a hot basket just to minimize sediment. I'll put an Amazon link to the hot basket in the description, and if you buy it through the link, you will help me financially. Help pay for my upcoming surgery. I'm getting a penis reduction. Almost had a couple boil overs. 30 minute boil with Northern Brewer hops. At flame out, I added 1.5 bottles, which is 16 ounces or a pound in layman terms. And I just started stirring crazy. I don't want anything to get scorched on the bottom. I woke up the next morning to see zero activity in my airlock. Every homebrewer's worst nightmare. I did not want to put this beer under pressure because too much CO2 will make nitrogen an absolute nightmare. It'll all be foam. So one way to deal with stuck fermentation is to heat it up. It is super hot in San Diego right now. It's about 84 degrees. I've done this before and it's always worked. Bring it into the sun or put it in a hot bath. Just enough until you see the airlock show some activity and then bring the fermenter back to the recommended yeast temperature. But the problem is I forgot about about it and I left it out in the sun for six hours, fermenting at about 84, 85 degrees. Fool this man! The airlock was going crazier than I've ever seen. I've ruined the batch. I'm gonna have more off flavors than I could imagine. I still let it ferment for a week and I kegged it off. We did hit the desired alcohol by volume, 5.25 ABV, but the beer tasted like eggnog. The batch is ruined. And if you were subscribed to the Hoppy Hour, you'd know what to do with a bad batch of beer. But we kept it on the nitro system for 10 days and just to talk about the video and where it all went wrong. So it definitely got way better. So I'm tasting a little bit of like a molasses taste to it. I caked this off about a week ago and we were drinking it on the hoppy hour and it was not good. It had kind of like an eggnoggy taste. And I don't think the extract was as good as it was labeled. I don't think that. It's good. It's definitely different to what you described it a few weeks ago or a week ago when you kegged it. Tasted the extract. It was a lot more roasty than it was maple or bacon. And if I were to do this again, I probably would just add maple syrup and bacon. But it got way better. We were planning on dumping this batch out and I already shot a scene for this. Maybe we'll still put that in there. But this is not bad. It just goes to show that I know what happened. I'm not blaming the extract. I'm blaming myself because the yeast just fermented way too hot because I neglected it. I forgot about it and left it outside. But these off flavors, this eggnoggy flavor is going away. I don't know if I'd sell this beer, but we're definitely not gonna throw it out. No, don't throw it out. No, no, no. no. And I'd, I'd actually do another review in another week's time or another two weeks time, do another review, because it will probably taste even different. We'll do it on the Hoppy Hour. Yeah, so I'm absolutely. Subscribe to the Hoppy Hour. Subscribe to the Hoppy Hour. This is way better than it was. Next time, sometimes it just takes some time in the keg. Sometimes it just takes some time in the keg. You know what? If I didn't leave this beer out for six hours in the sun, this would be a delicious beer. I really believe that. So I am gonna leave the recipe in the description of this video. Shout out to these Brage Lords for supporting Homebrew for Life Awareness. Cheers to eating good and drinking good.
You're still here? What are you doing here? The video's over. Go home. Go home. Oh, I know what you want. I know what we have to do. What do you want? It's not that simple. What? Just say it! M. Say it. B. No. Say when. C. Alright guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to clean a brew kettle. Now, there's two important things we need to do. First, clean your kettle right after you brew. Don't let it sit for a week and then clean it. It will be extremely difficult. Two, use OxyClean. Do not use PBW. It's way too expensive. Just buy a big jug of OxyClean that will last you a year. Don't keep going to your brew store to buy small bags of PBW. If anything, just make sure that you do not use any kind of dish detergent. Dish detergent is hard to completely get off and it could leave soapy flavors. So what you're going to want to do is dump all the remaining sludge and wart and give it a good rinse. Now what we're going to do is fill up our kettle with hot water and dump about half a scoop of OxyClean into it and then let it sit overnight. While you're at it, put your other brew equipment in here that you've been using. Clean all this stuff as well, especially your vinyl hose. If you let your hose sit out for a day or two, it's gone. The brown color will never get out. Yes, I have cleaned brew kettles with just hot water, but usually when I'm cleaning my kettle, I'm cleaning all of my other brew equipment with it, and that's where the OxyClean really comes in. So clean it quick. Don't let the crust build up, and uh, hopefully this video made sense.